I built an AI-powered trivia bot that welcomes new users to my Discord server. This is online and running right now, so if you join my Discord server, it will send you a greeting message and ask you a trivia question. Uh, you should go check it out. Like, you should just, like, what are you waiting for? Like, go check it out. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I created that with Python, how I deploy it with Google Cloud. If you're interested in AI engineering, and in particular, AI integrations with language models from OpenAI, with services, in this case, Discord, and with actually deploying these things, then you'll like this video. I'm also gonna show you a lot of cool shit in the terminal um, and how I like to work. So I think this video, in one way or another, will level you up, and I hope you enjoy it. Before I show you any code, I need to explain how this works. So this is my Discord server. And as soon as you join, you'll get prompted with a question in the general chat channel. So here's an example. This is the Discord bot. This is the application I'm showing in this video. It generates a question using a language model and it came up with this question. What's the name of the AI model developed by OpenAI? It's gonna listen for this response to the question and then it's gonna pass it through another call to a language model to check if that's correct or not. And in this case, it says, oh yeah, it's partially correct. And it sort of provides some sort of answer. And then it stops, like it's, it, it doesn't continue talking. So I can talk and, and answer questions and then another user can join and this can all begin again. And so that's the experience that I've created with this bot. This is how it works. So let me show you how the code looks. So inside of this project, I have Zazenko's the Discord AI Trivia Bot. This is closed source. So I've you know, this is my own source code and I don't have this public. However, I'm gonna make some version of this open source and I will link to that in the video description below. It's gonna be in the Zazen Code season two folder on GitHub. And so inside of here, let me show you the Docker file. And this will be important when we come to host it. For now, all you really need to pay attention to is this final line right here. We're running Python main.py. So this main.py is the entry point to our application. Um, this is where everything's gonna happen for us. So let me just, um, I'm gonna open up Vim and we're we're gonna look at main and we're gonna talk through that code. Now, um, I'm gonna show you an overview of things and then we can dig into a little bit more of the details. We're using the Discord SDK. So if I just follow that, let's find where we call that. Here's where I'm initializing the Discord client. And you'll notice all of this is happening just at the top level. I don't have a lot of function, like there's no function. This will be called every time you call this file. It's not running in a main block or something. This is just, um, just, is just like executing as we run this file. So this is the first thing we do. We grab our OpenAI client. This is going to be our language model. And then we're initializing Discord. And I'm doing some Discord stuff to initialize the client. And then we get this client object. And so every time we see client, that's referring to the Discord client. And every time we see OpenAI client, that's referring to the language model client from OpenAI. So let me follow client through and see where we talk to it. So now I'm defining these functions. And I'm um, attaching these decorators for client.event. And this is how we interact with Discord, with the Discord SDK. So this um, main function needs to be constantly running. It's like live right now on the server that I showed you. This is executing right now. It's listening for events to happen on my Discord server. And one of those events is on ready. And there's an event down here called on member join. So this is going to be listening for when a member joins. And every time a member joins, it's going to execute this code. So this is the code that's responsible for prompting the user with a question. And I'm going to come down to see that. Uh, this is where we generate our question. We're calling this generate generate AI question. I'll show you that later, but to keep the things top level, we're going to imagine a question re is returned from this function. And then what I do is I put that question into this um, sort of question context object. And then if we keep looking at what happens to question, I'm going to be po posting that here and I'm sending this to the channel. So this is that templated uh, string that I was talking about. I'm referencing the member by saying member.mention. Here, member, I'm just fetching that uh, member from the object itself, like that's passed to this function. It's basically a context object where on member join gets the information about the member that's joined. And this is like done with the Discord SDK. And so every time that this event triggers, I know I'm getting access to the member. That's all that, that's all that's happening there. That's how I get access to this mention, um, like, 
object on the member, uh, which allows me to like actually ping the member to mention the member. So if I just pull up my chat, for example, that that's what's happening right here. That's how I say, welcome, Marco. I'm pinging the member with this, this little function right here, member.mention. And then I'm just going ahead and injecting the question that I got from the language model and I log some info. So this logging info is not happening in Discord. This just happens in my application where we can kind of see the logs and and understand how it works. The next function, the next part of this is, and, and the final part is this on message. So this is a really um, kind of more dangerous event because this is gonna get triggered every time a message is posted in my Discord server. So I need to be really careful about this and about only executing when, I'm, when, I, when it's the right time. Because if I was to just call some function here, it would be calling every time someone said anything in my entire server, which I definitely don't want. The first thing I wanna do is ignore messages from the bot itself and I realized that at first when I was testing this the trivia bot would keep answering itself <laughs> which is obviously which is obviously not what we want right when it sends this message it would just go ahead and answer it right away so I have to ignore that because that message itself would get picked up in this loop and um, like a recursive infinite loop type thing so okay so that's that explains this chunk here and then what, what I'm gonna do is just say okay this is the part that checks if I have some question that's active. Uh, for the purposes of what I've built, I only wanted to respond one time. So I just make sure we have this kind of question context thing going on, and then I'm gonna wipe that out. So see down here, I'm deleting the question context channel ID. So this basically causes it to only execute one time, and then this delete clause will mean that once I uh, send a message, this doesn't get this doesn't get run again. And here's where I'm sending the message. I just mentioned the user, um, so I'm tagging them, and then I, set, I, res I g attach the response. And at this point, we're gonna need to talk about some language model stuff. So the response comes from this verify answer, wh where I pass the context of the question and the message context. And if I look at where that function is, it's up here. But before I talk about the verify answer one, I should talk about this generate AI question because that this is the one that uh, you know returns the initial AI question. And it's really straightforward. Here's where I'm doing the integration with OpenAI. I'm using the OpenAI client library, which I initialized at the start of this code. And I'm calling the chat completions endpoint. And I'm asking it to go ahead and create a response for me using this model and passing in this message, this list of messages, which I'm getting from some environment variable or from some global variable. I'll show you that in a second. And that's it. Once I get the answer, I just sort of parse out the content and return that. So this function is returning a string. I should say something like this. This to be super clear, this is just going ahead and returning a string. Of course, um, yeah, and in the case of an exception, I generate this string. Well, this is awkward. It seems that I'm broken right now, and this string will propagate into my application if, if this condition is ever hit. For example, maybe I run out of money in my OpenAI account, and so uh, it stops processing, and it'll, it'll, it'll log that error for me so I can sort of track it on the um, deployment side and figure out what's going on because how this is gonna work is users are gonna see this sooner or later and then I'm gonna to have to check, well, what's the error? And I'm gonna to have to fix it, debug it so that we're getting this condition, the, the green condition again, so to speak. Right, and this is the other function I have set up just to verify the answer. It's the second call. So I, I'm just passing that in as my stage two prompt and it goes ahead and does the same parsing of that to return that. By the way, I wanna pause briefly and talk about my course, the AI Engineering Roadmap. We're talking about a lot of integrations here in this video. So I wanna show you how I teach integrations in my course. So if I go into any of these topics, let's start at the very beginning and I'll just go to deployment architectures. Here we're just talking about really broad, like software engineering type stuff. Sort of zip through a few lessons, find something. Containerization is what I'm about to get into in this video with Docker. So I introduced the idea of Docker and containerization. And here's, we're getting into LLM integration patterns. So this should have some interesting stuff. For example, the client libraries, language specific SDKs. An example of that is the OpenAI library, which we're using right here, which I just showed you. So anyway, if you have any questions about this course, uh, either before you purchase it or afterwards, you can go to my Discord server and you can ask any questions you have here and I'll just, yeah, I'll just talk with you about the course. All right, thanks for sticking through me through my advertisement. Let's get back to the video. 
Um, I've talked about these functions here for generating our language model responses, but it's a little bit abstract, like what's going on, because I'm using these global variables. I really want to show you every aspect of this and how it works. So let me um, talk through these global variables. So if I go to model, where do I have that model right here? So I'm using ChatGPT 4 on mini. I could change this to a different model. For example, if I spent, felt like spending a whole bunch of money, I could change it to ChatGPT 4.5 preview, and that would up my costs by about 500 times, I think. So let's not do that. I'll stick with mini and I also have my channel name for my discord server But this is the interesting object here It's the prompt structure and this is kind of the general structure of what the data we want to pass into OpenAI's API If you've never seen it before, I want you to focus on this part right here um, So we have a list of Dictionaries like a list of objects and each object is going to have a role and content the role will either be a system, that's going to be our system prompt. I have a video that I filmed very recently and posted about system prompts. Um, so you could check that out or maybe it's coming next week. I will link that at the end of this one or, or in the video description or something. Um, but uh, I have a system prompt for, for my Discord bot and that's the first um, object that I pass in. The next object is a user role and it has the content of generate a single trivia question uh, in this case. Um, for the for the stage two, I'm going to be feeding in this chunk right here. Um, so let me remind you how this works. So when I go down to use this, notice how I'm accessing one of the elements of this dictionary. Uh, and then down here, I'm accessing the second element. And strangely, I'm actually calling the second element. So this, this element here returns a function that I actually call in order to pass in a question and an answer. This is all just like syntactical sugar to make this kind of really nice and smooth. One reason I just love Python, you can easily throw together incredible code like this. In any case, this question and user answer basically just becomes available in, inside of this object here, and I can just inject them right here with an F string. Um, so that's how, I'm, that's how this is working. Let's look at these system prompts. Up here is the question system prompt, and this is the whole brains of my operation. So as I'm making changes to this application, I'm tweaking this. Typically, I'm just tweaking this. I also have a reply system prompt, and this is going to generate like how we want the model to reply. I have some examples of like, you should reply like this, you know, don't reply like this, it's too detailed, something like that. And by, by creating these as system prompts, I can bake all of the really kind of complicated system style logic into my system right there. And then I can keep my, um, my user questions really simple. So rather than having some big complicated prompt in here, I'm just like, yeah, just do it. Like do the thing you're supposed to do. And down here, same. I'm just like, here's the question, here's the answer. I'm not instructing it as to like how to output, what to do. I'm just like, this is the information you need. And then it uses its system prompt in order to provide me the output that I'm looking for. The last thing I wanna show you is how I actually update this application in production. So I'm gonna push an update right now and we're gonna see how that works. And what I need to do is just make a really small change. So this says that is unique and different. I mean, that seems a little bit, you know, let me just remove this. I'm going to say that is different each time it's requested. Hopefully that produces good output. Anyway, I've made a change. That's the point. So let me get out of here. I'm going to say get status and you can see I've modified this function. So if I say get diff, I'm going to see that change. I sort of added this while we were doing the demonstration, but this is the change I want to push. All right, so if I wanted to push this, I would just go ahead and add it. So I'm gonna add all my changes. I can see that I've changed these. I'll, I'll write some git commit message. And I'm gonna say change uh, made live during filming. And then I'm gonna push that. Now, when I push this code, it is gonna do something special. So let me show you how it works on Discord or on GitHub rather. So if I go to this repository, here's this code, I'm gonna go to my actions and I've got a GitHub action set up in order to deploy this. So right now it's all a bunch of check marks, but let me hop back and I'm gonna push this. Now I'm gonna hop back and refresh this page and we're gonna see this sort of workflow QR. Here it is. So it's saying change made live during filming. It's just now and it's queued it. So this should be running. Here we go. We can see it running and I can go ahead and look in here. Now I have to be careful not to reveal any, I guess, secrets that might leak showing you this, but basically it's just going to be checking, um, copying this over. So I set up my job. I'm going to basically copy this code over to my server and then I'm going to deploy it to GCP, just running certain commands. I have this command right here, restart trivia bot.sh. It's running that right now. And once I do that, uh, the deployment will have been made live and it, it, this will just be working. Yep, 
it's good. Uh, it's done. It's working. Okay, cool. So that deployment worked. How does that work? Um, if I do git ls files and then let's do grep on uh, work flows. So here we go. So this is the deployment file. This is my workflow file. Um, what I could do is I could open that up uh, using this com code here. So this is um, the deployment uh, code. It's actually right here in this GitHub folder workflows. In any case, uh, this is what's doing that deployment that I just showed you. And I've got some secrets set up. These are my environment variables. I just set these up in GitHub. Uh, and it just goes ahead and runs this restart trivia bot after it pushes this new code in order to uh, in order to do this. The last thing I need to show you is how I would log into the server and just really see what's happening there. So you're going to need the gcloud CLI set up. If you type gcloud, you should see the project uh, that you're interested in. My project is Code, so I can see that here on my screen. So what I want to do is say gcloud compute, and then I want to SSH in here. So I'm I just going to, I kind of forget how to do that. I'm going to say gcloud compute SSH, and I think it's called, I called it Zazencode's QuickBen. So let me show you that. So it's right here, Zazencode's QuickBen. I'm just gonna copy that name. Let's try and log in here. All right, so it's asking me to log in. Uh, it looks like it's uploading some information. I guess my SSH uh, information changed and it's just got to sort of configure that. But this is the gcloud CLI SSHing me into my instance where this trivia bot runs. So here's this restart trivia bot. This is what gets called in order to like redeploy my service. And it really explains well how this is working. Um, I have, I've got some like environment file stuff and then I'm going into the right folder and I'm, I'm sort of, Right, so I'll have basically replaced this code when I when my workflow runs. And so for that reason, I just need to make sure the environment variable is included in here because I, I don't include that in my Git repository. That's all this first line does. The second line goes into that uh, folder, which you can see right here. So it just goes inside of there. And then I stop my trivia bot, I build it, and I restart it. And that's my whole deployment. That's how it works. Other than that, it's, yeah, I mean, it's just really straightforward. This is all the source code I was just showing you. It just lives on my server. Just had to install Docker on here. So if I was to say like Docker PS, um, sudo, I'll just go ahead and see that running. And it's just running live. It's just waiting to, it's waiting for something to happen. It's literally, it's just waiting for you to join my Discord server and uh, start talking to it. If you're still watching, I'd appreciate it if you give me a like and consider subscribing. In my next video, I'm gonna extend my Discord integration to include a chatbot that you can talk to inside of my Discord server. It might be live right now by the time you, you join. And if you wanna see that video, you can see a link at the end of this one. You can click through to that right now. Thank you again and namaste.